Hey everybody, my name is Trevor, and today I'm gonna to be talking about the AWS Certified Solutions Architect, and how you can prepare and pass quick. I recently studied for the AWS Certified Solutions Architect exam, and I managed to pass with about five weeks of prep time. So I wanna share with you the resources that I used, and hopefully you can go out there and get the certification relatively quick on your own. Why would somebody wanna get AWS certified? Well, if, if you weren't aware, AWS, they pioneered the cloud computing space and uh, it continues to evolve and grow and uh, a lot of job opportunities, a lot of really just interesting stuff to learn. Like if you understand AWS, you kind of understand how a lot of things can work. And so uh, it's, a, it's a really fascinating subject. Uh, what's great about this exam is whether you're like really new to the industry or whether you're an industry veteran, like cloud computing is still gonna be relevant in your life. And so hopefully this helps anybody who's preparing for that exam to figure out what they need to do and get a study plan in place. I'm not going to be really going over any specifics as far as what's on the exam, but I'm going to be making specific recommendations for training resources that will allow you to pass with flying colors, I assure you. One thing I'll say before I go into the resources is, you know, me personally, I thought this exam was going to be more difficult than it was. When I started preparing for the exam, I read somewhere online that it's about as hard as getting a CCNA. And I I got my CCNA like almost 10 years ago. It was the first cert I ever got. I was like 19 years old. And I remember that being like a grueling test to study for. Uh, and I kind of underestimated what 10 years of experience does in terms of how quickly you can pump out a certification. Uh, you know, a lot of the things that you kind of already know you can pull upon. And it's, it's always just fun to have those moments of like, oh yeah, this does actually get easier after a while. But don't worry, even if you don't know anything about IT or cloud computing, this could be a good exam for you to, to knock out. And it really is kind of like the entry point for a, a serious certification uh, in the cloud computing and AWS world. And especially if you're new, it'll expose you to a lot of things at once and you'll get to figure out what's kind of interesting to you and what sparks your, your passion. So, all right, let's go through some resources that I used and uh, some recommendations for a training plan that I would make based on people's experience. All right, so first I'm just gonna tell you what I used to study and uh, maybe this this will be great for somebody that's coming at this from a similar angle that, that I came in. I have about 10 years of experience in the industry and while I don't know a lot about AWS before I took the cert, I know a lot about a bunch of different stuff. I've just had the opportunity to work on some different technologies. So uh, first and foremost, I spent about five weeks studying, uh, five days per week, roughly two hours a day. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but I think that's probably a fair average. Um, all I really did, I binged a Udemy course, and I'm gonna put a link in the description, it's by this guy named Stefan. He is an amazing teacher, has really pointed um, information, and also, uh, for me, what was the most important resource was not just the video content, the video content was important, but also he does hands-on and uh, g provides these slides. And it's a big deck, but it's really easy to synthesize, and so you can run through that deck a few times before you sit the exam, and I'm telling you, that deck for sure. I remember sitting in the exam, seeing questions being like, oh wow, that was on in that deck, that was on the on that deck. So uh, it was just really helpful resource. And I think like, if you already have some experience, it, the, about five weeks should be uh, more than enough for, for most people. If you don't, I'll tell you in a second how much you should probably study. I'm gonna link the course in the description, but that same course by Stefan uh, has a practice test. So you can take that, maybe like finish the training content do about a week of just reviewing the slides and then take the practice test and see what you get. If you score well, uh, schedule your exam. You should probably even schedule it in, in advance. I, I would I tend to do that to give myself a deadline. But uh, I personally using pretty much only this to study and then like randomly Googling things that I didn't have a clear understanding of, I got a score in the 900s, which is way above passing. And I don't say that to brag. I say it because I, I wish I would have sat the exam sooner. Uh, I think that the, the course is so good and so accurate that um, yeah, five weeks was, was a little too much for, for me, and I wish I would have probably just done four and got it over with. What I would recommend, and this is going to be based on your experience, right? For me, I have 10 years of experience in the industry, so I think about a month is good for somebody who is a professional in their career at this point and, and is a technologist and, and, and has a lot of technical experience. Um, if you're newer than that, you might need to practice different amount of times. And I think that the big difference based on your experience level is going to be like synthesizing the slides and the course, but also uh, the amount of hands-on that you need. I, I find that like when you've worked on a network system, for example, I, I, I found myself not needing to spend a lot of times hands-on creating VPCs and gateways and stuff like that because I pretty much get it watching the content. Same with like some storage and, and other virtual machine concepts. But 
people who are really new to technology, you're going to need to get your hands on, or it's not going to really make a lot of sense what you're what you're doing or what you're what you're learning about. Even if you do pass the exam, I think the hands on becomes way more important with the less um, experience that you have. So anyway, follow this guide, and I think that you have a great shot to knock it out of the park on your very first try. A couple other resources I want to mention just because they were recommended to me. Uh, there's some free stuff on YouTube. This channel called Glow Cut Architects. I found that really helpful. ACOG Guru, I've used them before for other certs. They're great. Um, I I didn't do this, but people have told me if you read the FAQ of like S3 and other AWS services that you'll be able to extract a lot of valuable information from that. So I might do that next time I take an AWS cert. And then of course the white papers, there's a lot of well-architected framework white papers and things. You'll find that um, actually as you're like Googling services that you don't fully understand, you'll find these white papers and I would just recommend read them. You know, uh, it's it's as much the course content as it is you filling the own, your own gaps as you're studying for these type of certifications. So closing thoughts here, uh, study hard, not too hard. Uh, it, it was a challenging exam, but very fair. Uh, one thing that's interesting that you'll find is if you look at the AWS Certified Solutions Architect exam and you look at the developer exam and the SysOps Associate exam, there's a lot of overlap. So it's been recommended to me to do them back to back. So I'm actually going to set the developer exam hopefully a week or a week and a half from today. And that, that I'll only have studied for that for two weeks because people say that you can kind of stack these tests back to back because there's just so much overlap. And so I'll let you know if that works for me here soon. Uh, but I figure I'm going to knock out at least two of the associates real quick uh, because, yeah, man, why not if I already have half the knowledge in my head from studying for the solutions architect? All right. I hope this helps somebody who's prepping for their exam. If you have any other questions about how I prepared, just reach out. But I think for the most part, the content's there. The link's in the description. The course is really cheap. Uh, either buy the course outright or just pay for a subscription. I just can't reiterate enough. It, it's a fair cert. You you really are going to be exposed to a lot of different concepts, but it's pretty fun. Like since most of the hands-on that I found is like just building stuff, uh, it's much different than other certs I've done where you're doing hands-on or theory and you're not really like seeing the result, but like it's cool. You could like build some applications and host some websites in S3 and like configure a load balancer all, all really fast. And it's just, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the, probably the most fun I've had studying for a cert in a while. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, you can always reach me on LinkedIn. And uh, till next time, happy cloud computing career advancement. All right. Bye.